recap of round one European Chess Club Cup and I missed you! Hello everyone and welcome back! My name is Nitzan Steinberg, I'm Chess Grandmaster in this YouTube channel and I just landed back yesterday from the European Chess Club Cup in Serbia and unfortunately I caught a bit of cold but I could not wait to record this first round recap for you guys so this was my final season playing for the Bersheva chess club team and starting next year I will represent the Rishon Lezion club with Grandmaster Boris Gelfand and Maxim Rochten and a lot of very strong players of course and you know I can tell you that in Bersheva I had the honor and the pleasure of course of playing on board number two in this tournament and here is the amazing lineup of my teammates Board number one, we can see here Grandmaster Viktor Michalevsky, one of the most unique players in Israel with his style. You know, he's just unbelievable style. Board number two, myself. And board number three, we have my great friend and partner, Grandmaster Ori Kobo. Board number four, the legendary Grandmaster Alon Greenfeld, who was also Israeli national captain for years. Board number five, Grandmaster Evgeny Posny, a very frequent member of the Israeli national team, solid and strong one. Board number six, we have Grandmaster Alexander Huzman, the all-time leader in points, scored in the European Club Cup and also he that beat Grandmaster and the world champion Gary Kasparov in this tournament a few decades ago and now let's go into the action uh, in round number one I played with the black pieces against international master Semil Gulbas from Turkey it was a very exciting and dynamic game with some interesting decisions along the way I will walk you through the key moments and of course the thoughts process make sure to stick around until the end of the video to find out how this game ended and also how our team performed in this first match before we begin i would really appreciate if you can just press the like button and subscribe to the channel your support makes a big difference to me and helps me continue creating content like this and sharing this tournament experience with you so let's start and i'm going into the game so e4 c5 knight of three d6 the you know the beginning of this game so the sicilian knight f6 of course attacking that e4 pawn knight c3 and a6 the knight of opening Whew. first round after i think almost half a year maybe that i didn't play chess over the board for me it's like you know it's a magic moments for me to play over the board with my teammates and have some fun in serbia uh, very cold was there and you know it's very good atmosphere because in the playing hall you can see Pragananda we have Gukesh you know just the amazing players Arjuna Rigaisi um, Van Forest and we have also Abdu Saturov you know just the best players in the world right so yeah a6 on the board we have Nidorf Bishop e2 so this is his choice in this opening and of course we learned maybe if you can remember uh, our course that I did some I think four or five videos about the Knight of Variation I, and I, we talked there about e6 move and it's of course very um, uh, good move by black but another very strong here and the main line here is to play e5 of course attacking the d4 knight he's playing knight b3 also knight f3 should be a move here knight d5 is not so good because of d5 uh, with threat of this pawn on e4 and don't forget that bishop also attacking the knight on f5 so d4 with bishop b4 and pawn on e4 is under attack so yeah black is already better here so we play the move knight b3 yeah knight f3 uh, also uh, one move here but bishop e7 this is our move of course after bishop g5 there is some options bishop e6 for example knight bd7 
Uh, and you know, you can learn here some theory, but overall it's it's quite fine for black here. So he played a move knight b3, the main line here, and now bishop e7. And here he played a move bishop e3. And also you can see uh, the clock, um, uh, you know, management, time management by me and also by my opponent. So bishop e3 was played, and his idea here that if I'm castling, a very strong move by white, g4. And he's attacking with g5, h4, knight d5, and it's not so easy because I don't have some moves to play. Because, for example, bishop e6, just g5, knight fd7, I think just h4, or also maybe queen d2 with long castle, and after it, h4, h5, knight d5, and white is just pressing here, right? So the point here that you don't need to castle before white will castle to the short side. So I play the move bishop e6, and the point, of course, is that after g4 here, you have just the move d5 in the center, right? And after g5, just knight takes e4, and black is obviously fine, at least, yeah? So, yeah, we are playing the move bishop e6 here, and wait uh, for uh, the castle. But he played the move knight d5, and here it's interesting position, first of all, to think about, right? What is the threat? So the threat is bishop b6, right? And knight c7. For example, if I'm playing a move knight c6, just bishop b6 attacking the queen, and after queen d7, knight c7 check, king f8, and taking the rook, right? So we are dying rook and uh, just losing position. So after knight d5, we have some options. Of course, knight e4 is not good because of bishop b6 with the same things, right? Um, and we have here knight takes d5, another interesting uh, solution. E takes uh, d5, bishop f5, and now probably I think uh, something around, I don't know, just castle, maybe castle, I think c4, a4 maybe, a4, knight e7, queen d2, uh, bishop g6, looks fine. You know, black will try to play to push f5 with rook c8, but white also will play a5, c4, maybe f4 when we are playing the move f5, right? So it's very complicated position. I can tell you that it's very similar to the Sveshnikov opening, um, but I really like it for white. I'm not sure I like it for black uh, because I, I played a lot of time with the white pieces. So yeah, I'm not sure about his position uh, after knight takes d5, but it's also, of course, a very logic uh, and extremely fine position for black. Uh, but I played the move knight bd7 here. Sorry, yeah, knight bd7 just protecting protecting the bishop b6 uh, ideas and also just uh, you know providing the knight to come into the center and also rook c8 maybe and don't forget that we are attacking the pawn on e4 right right now so after knight takes e7 for example just queen takes e7 and now the e4 pawn is under attack just, for example bishop f3 but just castle, rook a c8, uh, rook c6, maybe rook f c8, attacking this pawn on c2, and this bishop on f3 is a big pawn, right? So, yeah, it's it looks very strong for black here. Uh, knight e7 was not uh, the best here, so he played a move queen d3, the best move, of course, just uh, controlling the e4 pawn, uh, and telling me that I cannot take with a knight on d5, because e takes d5, and here I don't have any good move here right as you can see because now the queen is controlling the f5 square so of course after queen d3 i didn't take with the knight uh, on d5 i played bishop takes d5 e takes d5 and now i played i think overall very strong move rook c8 developing and improving a piece and don't forget that we have this castle move oh but what we already learned that if white didn't uh, told us yet where he want to castle, short side or maybe long side, we cannot castle because g4 now. And you know, it will be not so easy for us. g4, g5, h4, h5, g6, white is pressing. And also don't forget, he will go for the long side castle and just attack with all his power in the king side. So I'm not playing castle, I'm playing rook c8. I must be flexible here, right? Very important thing. c4, and I'm going for the castle. And the point here that after g4, I have the move e4 with queen d1, knight e5. And here it's, you know, very, very uh, different because now we are attacking this pawn. Also knight fd7, knight b6, also b5. It will not be easy for him to, to go for the long castle, right? So now, you know, this file will be just bad for him. So after c4, <coughs> sorry, 
I just can play the move castle and without uh, afraid of g4. So, <clears throat> yeah, I'm a little bit sick. So short castle he played, and now I play the move rook e8. And this was a little bit, you know, uh, inaccuracy, I think, overall. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> I really uh, appreciate if you, you know, if you understand me, because, yeah, I, I, I came back just sick from this tournament. So knight e8 was the, the best move here, and the point behind knight e8 is that you really want to play the move f5 an attack in the king's side. And why? Because we have here a lot of pawns, right? Four against three, and maybe with f5, yeah, bishop g5, we have some play in the king's side, right? So knight e8 is the best, and also we have some options like to play g6, knight g7, and f5, okay? So this knight will be very good on g7. So knight e8 uh, is one of the most common ideas in such positions. I plan to move rook e8, and my thinkful ideas here was to play bishop f8, g6, bishop g7, and then I will be able to open this diagonal with e4, and the bishop on g7 will be very, very strong here. Uh, but it's not so easy. So we play the move rook fd1, just improving his uh, rook. Bishop f8 after 11 minutes of thoughts. So interesting idea. Uh, you know, I'm not sure why I uh, why it took so much time for me to play this move, I think overall because it was the first game in the tournament after half an year that I didn't play chess over the board and I need to bring the, the confidence back to my life, right? So it's not so easy. Bishop f8 was played, the rook ac1 of course makes a lot of sense, he really want to push somewhere the move c5, right? So g6, until now c5 is not working because we have uh, more defenders, right? We have four uh, defenders against, uh, you know, like only three, right? So it's it's very strong for us. So knight d2, and this is also very very strong and logical move because he really want to push b4, knight b3, and then c5. So this uh, is idea, and I play the move a5. I don't want to allow him to play uh, very easily b4. And here we play the move b3, and for me it was inaccuracy. I, I felt like it's very uh, slowly move. And the point here that after a3 he is playing, we will push a4. And this is very strong for us because b4 just will not come, right? In the near future. So we play the move b3 with the options and the idea to play the next move, a3 and then b4. Okay, but now I'm playing move h5. I think this is a very strong move by me that I really want to push knight g4. For example, if he's going here a3, I would play the move knight g4, bishop takes g4, right? Because, you know, the bishop on e3 is very important. h takes, b4 takes, takes, and f5. And this position I really like for, for black because I have a lot of options here. I really want to play f4 and this bishop is in trouble here. And also e4, bishop g7, knight e5, maybe queen h4 with some rook uh, maneuvering to attack this h2 pawn. I don't know, but a lot of ideas here in such position. So after h5, he played a move h3 and just prophylactic move, right? And here my first intuition was to play the move king h7. Because, you know, I understand that this bishop is a very powerful piece. And I really r would like to exchange it against this bishop on f8. Because if I will manage to exchange these two bishops, this pair of bishops, I will have a very good control in the dark squares. Knight c5, queen b6, e4, maybe some queen b4. A lot of dark squares are important here. Maybe h4, knight h5, knight f4, right? So it really makes sense for me. But... I really didn't like the move knight f3 and I was mistaken because knight f3 is not the best move here. I thought the position after knight f3 e4, right, I'm just attacking, but knight g5 check, king g8 and queen d2 and I was not sure about this position because I felt like this knight is a very strong piece here but it's not so right. Bishop h6 and yeah, I I'm not sure what he can do. Knight c5, knight e5 or c5, yeah, and also maybe rook e5, rook f5. So a lot of options here against this knight on g5. So, uh, you know, I, I thought, yeah, king h7 uh, was the best, but after it, I have, I, I had some uh, misunderstanding about the position. So I didn't play it. I played a move knight h7, and this was a little bit mistake because 
You know, knight h7 is like b3, a very slow move, right? Slowly move. He played a move a3 and now f5. And here, of course, f4 is the threat. And here, the, the best move for white was c5. And this was a, a very clever one. And I, I know what, it's very difficult for my opinion. Because after f4, there is queen takes g6 check, king h8, and now just knight e4. And he, of course, it's very difficult to understand why, because I'm taking it and c takes d6. And this position somehow very bad for black because my king is not good, right? He's very uh, not safe. And these pieces not do something uh, strong, right? And, but white has very strong pieces here. The queen here, the knight here, the rooks here, the bishop would, from d3 or from h5. And you know, it's, it's looking very good for white. And the active here, the initiative, just amazing. So this c5 was a very clever move. And after d takes c5, for example, just play the move knight c4. And the next move will be d6, right? And bishop d2 maybe. So it's, it's very complicated position, but, but this pawn, uh, you know, sacrifice is very um, strategic one. You, you know, black has a lot of um, weaknesses in the position. The g6 pawn, the c5 pawn, the b7, the a5 pawn. So not so easy uh, to handle for, for, for white, for black, sorry. Uh, but yeah, c5, it's not so easy one to, to play. So he played a move f3 uh, because he really thought about uh, how to control the bishop on e3. And f3, the point, of course, after f4, just queen takes g6 check and bishop is going back, right? So yeah, f3 was a mistake. And now I play the move rook h, a uh, knight, of course, from h to f7, f6. I'm coming back with a knight with some options of e4 with the king h7, bishop h6, or maybe knight c5. I really just want to bring back to the, the knight into the game from h7 that uh, just didn't did there uh, anything, right? So queen b1 was played and now a uh, king h7, uh, of course, just to play the move bishop h6 and uh, to exchange this pair of bishops, b4, bishop h6 immediately, bishop takes, king takes, and now queen b3. The point here that c5 was interesting solution for him, but a takes b4, a takes b4, d takes c5, and then uh, I thought, yeah, knight c4, I thought, during the game, and here I thought I will take it, because now knight d6, we have a check here and grabbing the knight, right? So after uh, c takes b4, queen takes b4 is the best, and I was not sure about his position because queen e7, for example, d6, queen e6, queen takes b7, and I don't know, maybe f4 with h4, knight h5, um, knight g3, or or maybe e4. But this position is, is very complicated. I really like it for black uh, during the game, but I was not sure 100% that it's better for me. So after king takes h6, he played the move queen b3. And as you can see, the time, um, you know, the time was here like 36 minutes for me against 25 minutes of the international master Semil uh, Gulbas from Turkey. So I play the move king g7 now and just putting the queen, the king back because I thought that c5, this is the threat, right? For example, if I'm playing, I don't know, such a move like uh, h4, just c5. And here there is some trick that after knight takes c5, just rook takes c5, rook takes and queen e3 check, right? and uh, white has just peace up and winning position, absolutely. So I play the move king g7, coming back to a safe side, and then king h1. And here I, I miscalculated, and I didn't understand position accurate as I really wanted to, to have. I played the move uh, a takes b4, a takes, and now I played the move h4, and this was a mistake, because, you know, I thought like I would play h4 with knight h5, knight g3, knight f4, I have a lot of options, a lot of, it, a lot of ideas, queen g5 maybe, coming into the attack, but, you know, I don't have so much time, because after h4 there is c5 move. So instead of h4, the best move was b6, just, you know, to avoid c5, and of course I saw it, but I didn't realize what I'm playing after rook a1. But the point that I'm just playing rook a8, and that's it. And in the long game in such position, he has a lot of troubles here in the black um, squares, right? And this bishop on e2 is not a good piece, right? We have 
two knights in a close position and it's looking very good for black so yeah b6 rook a1 rook a8 was a very clever move by me uh, but i didn't did it uh, yeah i i played with h4 and now c5 very strong move by my opponent and d takes c5 and just bishop b5 just developing a bishop sacrificing a pawn but now as you can see his pieces are doing crazy here the queen the knight will come to c4 the bishop here and i don't know what to do and my king on g7 is uh, for my opinion uh, is you know is is not so safe like this king on h1 so yeah i, I have some troubles here i played with rook f8 after five minutes of thought and i didn't know what to do because c takes the b4 just knight c4 i thought uh, i don't know it's looking not so easy 96 d6 queen takes b4 white is just pressing here with a very good in, in, in initiative right so yeah, rook f8 was played, but now knight c4, a queen e7, I think overall it was a very strong move, and now we played uh, b takes c5, and overall d6 was a very strong for white, after queen e6, f4, and this is very, uh, you know, easy to miss, because f4, it's, it's not so easy to, to, to look for such move, and the point here that after e takes f4, just bishop takes d7, and knight takes, of course, because after queen takes just knight b6, and this is a fork, right? So knight takes d7 and now rook e1. And yeah, it's not so easy. Rook e7 chuck and rook c1. You know, white is pressing here with so much uh, powerful ideas, right? And, and yeah, it's, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, may, maybe if the, this position occurred in the game, I, 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 I will lose this. But who knows, yeah? He didn't play it. After queen e7, he took the pawn on c5. But then I took with the rook. And now knight f5. This was the mistake. I thought he will play with bishop takes d7. And then knight takes d7, of course. Queen takes b7. And now rook fc8. And I have the possibility in such position, right? Because this knight cannot go anywhere. And this queen must protect this knight. And this rook also must protect this knight. So I had the options maybe in some ideas. I don't know how. Maybe knight f6, knight h5, knight g3. But maybe I felt like... I'm in a good position here, um, yeah, but overall it should be equal, right? So we played the move knight a5 with 4 minutes on the clock, and I took the rook on c1, rook takes, and knight b6, a uh, very strong idea, I think, uh, overall, because now after bishop c6 he played, but overall after d6, I thought just queen takes, knight takes b7, and here I thought queen e7, uh, I missed queen d5. This is the best solution for, for black here because after rook c7, just rook f7, and that's it. I'm, I'm totally fine here. Uh, I'm pressing for a win here with one pawn up. Uh, but I thought during the game to play queen um, e7, and after bishop c6, I, I found a very nice move, knight a8. And the point here that after knight c5, I have the option to play knight c7 and guard this square on e6 uh, from this knight uh, from c5 and you know in this position i have one pawn up and i'm pressing right i don't know rook d8 knight h5 knight g3 e4 maybe and one pawn up is one pawn up right so it's a good advantage here but he played after knight b6 the move bishop c6 and this was a mistake with two minutes on the clock b takes b takes e6 queen takes b6 knight takes d5 queen takes e6 and now knight f4 and this position i i really felt like maybe i have good chances to win it because one pawn up and this knight on a5 is not working and i have some plans queen g5 e4 maybe queen g2 queen g3 knight h3 so much uh, ideas here he played with queen b5 and here i played king h6 i felt like my king is not so good here and i really want uh, to escape with him right uh, in a better position for him in a better and safe one uh, but the best move was e4 just press uh, pressing the e4 move and just you know promote it right uh, and yeah it was difficult for me to understand um, because i thought like, i don't know knight c6 queen g5 but yeah the king is totally fine here queen e5 is not uh, something that i want to to be afraid of because king h6 and that's it so yeah i played king h6 move but also with time trouble of course we have only four moves to play i uh, until the uh, the move number 40 to get the half an hour so he played the move queen b2 and now just queen g5 rook d1 and rook c8 also e4 just uh, you know looking very strong but i th i saw uh, rook c8 just uh, <clears throat> avoiding this knight to come back 
to c4 or c6 and to attack this pawn on e5. So we play the move knight b7 and now rook b8, rook d7, and I play the move rook c8 coming back with the threat of rook c1, right? And with the, because after rook queen takes just queen takes g2 checkmate, and if king h2 just queen g3 checkmate. So now he came back and now I had the, the pleasure uh, to take some time because the 41 move is coming and I have some time to think. And I came back from the toilet after washing my face and I played the move rook b8, rook d7 and now just queen to g, g3. And it's very beautiful because you don't have any move to play, right? This knight cannot go anywhere because of the queen. The rook uh, cannot go, for example, I don't know, rook d1, just rook takes b7, right? And that's it after queen takes queen g2 checkmate uh, and if he's playing rook d2 for example just rook takes b7 queen takes and queen e1 check and taking this rook and checkmate of course the next move so yeah th there is nothing to to play and my opponent resigned the game and i won the first game in the european chess club cup and for me just uh, you know amazing start uh, to win with the black pieces against a very strong international master with the Nidorf, and i learned a lot about this also theory right and also about uh, the position style right how can i play rook e8 or 98 in the opening what is my plan to play in such positions in such uh, you know like pawn structure so overall uh, it was it was a nice game let's see what uh, you know for the team match right because we are in the team match Bersheva. so we won it five and a half against half uh, Alex Huzman playing on the last board drew his game while all the other play, uh, players of course secured uh, wins a great start for the team so congratulations and uh, let me know in the comments what do you think about my first game in the tournament uh, and thank you of course for watching me uh, I missed you I missed you I really hope you enjoy this breakdown of my first round game and don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe my channel for more chess content and make sure to come back tomorrow for the round number two things only get more intense from here see you soon bye bye